Dad was motivated to keep working as none of us, not even himself, thought that it was going to be a terminal progressive disease which was causing him such trouble. Obviously it never ends and some weeks I get good weeks, some weeks I get bad weeks. Some days, days on end, I feel really bad. Today was just a day that made me feel like, okay, I can do this, like I'm not completely broken. I think it can feel like you're on your own. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've obviously logged my grief journey so far um, on my YouTube channel. And if you don't know what happened, my dad passed away quite suddenly six months ago. A lot has happened since then. I have lost friends since then who have passed away. So in the past six months, I've really been grieving in many different ways. And I think I've come to a point where I've realised that everyone grieves in different ways. You grieve differently for different people, depending on your relationship and... Sometimes it kind of dawns on you the reality of it, but I don't feel like I sit with the reality or I haven't sat with the reality of it for a while. I'm six months in and I've heard a lot of people say that the grief really kicks in a year plus because that's when you start, it really starts hitting home. I felt a kind of pressure to be at a certain point I felt worried about getting to a certain point because of the expectation of being a certain way or whatnot. And I don't know where I am with it. I think because my dad passed away quite suddenly and we don't know yet what happened. He had motor neurons disease, but he died suddenly. So it's usually if someone has motor neurons disease, they're on palliative care and they pass away like in a hospital, hospital at home with care or carers like wife, sons, daughters, family. And we don't know what happened. So there's an element of it where I'm not sure what to process because there's certain things that I don't know yet. As I said, I have lost two other people in my life other than my dad, who I really looked up to, who I was really fond of those people. Honestly, it feels like this past six months have just been losing people. And I am in a job, like I'm training to be a therapist and there is an expectation of therapists to have all of their stuff together. And don't get me wrong, like the usual thing is that if you're going through stuff, it's good to process it as a therapist and not have your own stuff festering up to not have that like counter transference that could impact a client. But we don't have it all together and I don't think anyone really does. And I think if people are honest, it's amazing. And if people aren't honest, People can maybe think, oh, they have it all together, but yeah, I don't I don't think any of us really do. We're we're on this kind of for our whole life, I think, and that's okay. I have not really cried a lot about it. I'm I would say I'm not really a crier. I do cry if other people cry, but I I didn't I don't know what it is. I just feel uncomfortable. Especially because usually when people cry, people are like, oh, it's okay which is lovely, but I don't like to be touched if I'm crying. So I think subconsciously I'm thinking, okay, don't cry because you don't want that kind of attention. So I kind of cry in private. And the other day I cried a lot in front of some of my friends and it felt like a real release and it felt like I'd overcome that something because I cried in front of people. Where I'm at at the moment is as time goes on, although I spoke about the pressure to be at a certain point um, that you kind of feel sometimes, and I think anyone can feel that um, with, with grieving, with mental health of like needing to be at a certain point in recovery or, or the grieving process, um, but that's naturally not how it happens. And a lot of people come to therapy and uh, they might breeze through it and it might be quite, you know, but sometimes it really is, it gets worse before it gets better. And that's actually a good thing. You kind of are working through things to be able to hold more stuff. And whilst that's difficult, it does get harder before it gets better. But I think that's with most things in life. And I think that can really scare people to come into therapy. But the therapist should be in a place where they can facilitate that in a safe way. So you're not going to be really, really low or traumatised from a conversation or a reflection, do you know what I mean? I have finished my first year of training and my second year of training is soon and I'll be on placement and things like that and working with people and 
I think what's going to be hard as time goes on is knowing that where I am right now, I haven't changed too much from when my dad passed away. But I think there's certain pivotal moments coming up that makes you feel further away and further away. It's interesting because I think that like an ending of a course or an ending of a day or an ending of an exam, those kind of endings can also be like a loss and a grief. And sometimes if I feel like I've finished something, it feels like a loss. Or, well, maybe that's the reason why humans kind of stay in a place because they don't want to move on and experience a loss. So what I'm saying by that is feelings of finishing things bring up like the grief again. I thought I want, I kind of wanted to talk about it in this video and hopefully this reaches people, young people that might be grieving for their parent. I mean, like I have lost my parent very young. Last week, I think it was, no, the week after, the week before last, it was Father's Day. And I just didn't really, I didn't go on social media. I just avoided it. So it's like things like that. When you have lost a lot of people as well, like in a really short amount of time, it becomes like I described it, like it becomes like my dad is now the other people that have passed away and they've all kind of conjoined into one. And there's a lot of feelings around that that come with guilt and like, why am I not prioritising them when I feel about them? And there's so much that comes with it. And I don't really speak about it that openly with a lot of people because I have found that grief and illness is a really uncomfortable place for people, especially if they are fearful of it. And I think a lot of us are, fe are fearful of death and illness and suffering, you know. I also think that it's good to have people that you can just talk to like this and they'll just listen, whether that's a therapist, a good friend. And I think if you're supporting someone that is grieving, just listen, terminal illness and death and things like that that come with that, like there's no fixing it. People, like it is difficult, like not just the individual part of it but the interpersonal relational like communicating with other people about it because you almost feel guilty because you want I kind of want to protect people as well from what I've been through because it's so awful but I just wanted to come on here and talk about it for a little bit and kind of raise awareness of like the experience of a young person losing their dad and other people in a really short space of time so if you can relate to anything, um, make sure to share your experience down below. Um, I'm also going to put links in the description to MND, um, charity, Motor Neurons Disease Charity. There is not a lot of awareness to motor neurons disease, but it is a terminal illness that has no cure. And you can donate down below for the research to try and find a cure. This is kind of like a snapshot, I guess. And I wanted to come on here and like raise a few things and talk about it today. I think I've been thinking for a while like I want to talk about certain things I want to talk about certain things but I couldn't put it into words and now I feel like I can so I hope that this video maybe made you aware or is there something in your life where you feel disconnected or overly connected with a death or maybe you're supporting someone who their parents passed away and you just don't know what to do um let me know in the comments but I hope this video was useful, um, like I said, for someone to relate if you're young and you've lost someone or these feelings can come into it, like even if you're not young. But obviously I am, so I'm sharing my experience. But yeah, I think when once I came to accept that I'm going to be grieving forever, although that sounds huge, it kind of takes the pressure off needing to be as certain point, like I must. A lot of the time in therapy with CBT, shoulds and musts are kind of removed and I think that that's a really good way to look at grief is taking away those shoulds and musts changing it to like I can make sure you guys subscribe to see more videos like this I haven't done like a sit down talky video in ages I usually post vlogs and stuff but obviously within those vlogs I usually talk about my grief journey but kind of just wanted to make it one video today but yeah I think you're doing okay good enough and I shall see you in the next one. Bye everyone.